brethren. The nugget that I've chosen today from Solomon is about brother Elias Ashmole, solicitor, antiquarian, alchemist, astrologer, and Freemason. Interred in a tomb in the church of St. Mary in Lambeth near the Thames are the remains of Elias Ashmole. The story of his life and his accomplishments are remarkable. Moreover, he probably never realised the importance that posterity would place upon two simple entries in his diary. He was born in Lichfield in Staffordshire in 1617. His father was a saddler by trade and a soldier by choice, and his mother a lady of good family. His father entered him as a chorister in the cathedral choir of his native city, which greatly benefited his education such that he succeeded in getting himself admitted as a solicitor in 1638, at the earliest legal age of 21. He then married Eleanor, the daughter of a wealthy Cheshire landowner. At the outbreak of the English Civil War, he left law to follow the king's fortunes in the army. To begin with, he served in the ordinance at Oxford, then became as the king's commissioner of excise and revenue in Worcester, only later to reappear with the rank of captain in an infantry regiment, finally returning to the Ordnance Corps in Oxford, having advanced to the post of Comptroller of Ordnance, which is the equivalent of Her Majesty's Quartermaster General. With the end of the Civil War and the defeat of King Charles and the surrender of Worcester to Cromwell in 1646, Elias Ashmole returned to his family home at Smallwood in Cheshire. It was at this time that he was made a Freemason at Warrington in Lancashire, and it was later duly recorded in his diary. Now, I'll just break off there, brethren, and read that diary entry to you. It's dated the 16th of October, 1646, at 4.30 p.m. He said, I was made a Freemason at Warrington in Lancashire, with Colonel Henry Mainwaring of Carhinchum in Cheshire. The names of those that were of the lodge, Mr. Richard Penkert, Warden, Mr. James Collier, Mr. Richard Sankey, Henry Littler, John Ellum, Richard Ellum, and Hugh Brewer. I doubt very much, brethren, if Brother Elias realised the importance that Freemasonry and history would put on that simple entry, which established him as perhaps being the first non-operative Mason to be made a Freemason. It is unlikely that he was the first non-operative to be admitted a Freemason, in an English lodge, and it's unlikely that we will ever know why he did it. Theories have been advanced that it was to give him safe passage around the country and lodgings wherever there was a Freemason's lodge, it being a dangerous time in English history. He was a conscientious diarist. We must assume that he did not attend any lodge between his initiation in 1646 and 1682. Yet it must have been known that he had been made a Freemason, otherwise he would not have received the summons in 1682. Nor do we know what caused the lodge to be convened in 1682, though it was probably the greatest concentration of operative Masons that had ever occurred in London repairing and rebuilding after the ravages of the Great Fire of 1666. On that evening, they made other Masons, and some, if not most of the attendees, were non-operatives. We will never know if that was the first non-operative lodge, but it's fascinating to speculate on what that diary entry might be hiding. Let us return to the life and times of this interesting man. When Ashmole later moved to Lambeth in South London, he lodged with the collector and gardener John Tradescant, 
who had a collection of plants, minerals, coins and curiosities acquired through expeditions to foreign lands. When Tradescant died, he left his collection to Ashmore, who already had his own collection of manuscripts, coins, astrological and archaeological specimens and medical artefacts. Ashmole had by then become an antiquarian and published the institution, laws and ceremonies of the most noble order of the Garter, which established his reputation. This was also a period when he became fascinated with alchemy. Following the restoration in 1661, he was nominated by Charles II at Windsor Herald an appointment of great distinction followed by being appointed Registrar and Treasurer. In 1671 he became a Fellow of the Royal Society and celebrated his appointment by designing the coat of arms of the Royal Society, which included a hand holding a plum roll. He was also given an honorary doctorate in medicine at Oxford University and in 1677 he gave his museum to the University on condition that they erected a building to hold it. The building was started in 1679 and completed three years later, becoming the first public museum in the country. Elias Ashmole passed to the Grand Lodge above in May 1692, well into his 70s, having lived a life of bewildering diversity. He was a chorister, solicitor, artilleryman, commissioner of taxes, cavalry captain, astrologer, alchemist, botanist, antiquarian, historian, herald, collector of curiosities, and doctor of medicine. Brethren, Brother Elias Ashmore. I hope you've enjoyed this nugget, Brethren, and I shall look forward to delivering another one in about a week's time. Thank you for listening.